Hi YouTube, Wycliffe Barrett here at Xplain Dedicated. Today I'm going to tell you about an application that's been around for quite some time in the FSX P3D world. I've been waiting for this to come to Xplain for years. I've been in constant contact with the developers over the years to see where it is. It has finally arrived. I'm talking about Avalosoft EFV, Avalosoft Electronic Flight Bag version 2. It's finally come to explain. You will need nothing else. This is the number one flight planning tool on the market. It's a flight planning tool. It's a moving map. You've got charts. This is the best. We'll see you right after the intro. Bravo, Bravo, Bravo. Good afternoon to you. Report your Uh 2,000 feet on 1014. Bravo, Bravo. Bravo, Bravo. After years of waiting, it is finally here on the X-Plane platform. This is Avalosoft's EFB Electronic Flight Bag version 2.1 for X-Plane. This is superb. I have used this in the past some years ago when I used to be on FSX. It is absolutely brilliant. It is a flight planning tool. It shows you weather. It's got charts. It's got uh, ILS approaches. It's got everything. It's also a moving map. That This is superb. And not only that... You can get this for 30 days on a 30-day free trial, which is unheard of in the flight simming world. Rarely do you get a free trial of software, but you can pre-trial this one for 30 days. It's not cheap to buy. It costs £45.62p, uh, $59.77 US, and if you're buying in euros, it's €52.81 at the present exchange rate today, this moment. This is the one to buy. You'll never need anything else. Let's get into it. Here we are then. Finally, EFB uh, version 2.1, I believe, for X-Plane. And uh, once you've installed it and you've, uh, you've created the database, which is perfectly automatic in actual fact, you just need to install it and then just follow along, just click on Agree. This is what EFB looks like when you first open it. As you can see here, I'm at Heathrow Airport uh, there, and uh, let's just go through what it looks like here, um, one of these buttons. So on the left-hand side here, we've got a number of buttons. There's uh, starting right at the top, airports, weather, procedures, uh, taxi, that isn't highlighted at the moment, and I'll explain why. Uh, flight plan, a radio, uh, checklist, that isn't highlighted, document, utilities, and then here we've got RSB, which is all to do with your flight plan. As you can see, I'm loaded up at Heathrow Airport, but uh, I'm going to change that in a moment. Uh, so this is where you uh, activate your flight plan. And this is where you look at different elements of your flight plan once you've created it. Down on the bottom here, uh, you've got a, a power button system, power off settings. It's showing you... My CPU usage at the moment I'm using is 0%, or it's just going up to 0.2%. Then you've got a switch between daylight and night time. So if you're flying during at night and you just want to dim the screen down, you can. This is your world map. So there you can see uh, Heathrow Airport's in the departure that I was doing, the uh, Gasky one kilo um, departure. Uh, on my way down to, um, I think I was going to Madrid. Um, and so you go back to airport view there. This is a, your moving map, so you can have your moving map on or off. Generally, I would have it on, but just for the purposes so we can see the whole of Heathrow, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've turned it off. Also, as you see then, as I zoom in, you see all the stand numbers. Uh, norm normally you would have um, buildings, it depends on the airport that you have installed as well at the time and how the uh, how Avalosoft picks up that information. Uh, you've got uh, different zoom levels here, so you can have uh, half, half a mile, uh, one nautical mile, two nautical miles, and then of course you've got uh, a zoom uh, magnifying glass there as well okay so that is your zoom then we have a uh, map position so you can uh, position on the airport or the aircraft there we go so I'm, I'm positioned the center of my aircraft is the center of the whole image so we can put that back to uh, airport so the airport is now in the middle there uh, 
Then we have information about the aircraft itself. So we can show and hide the aircraft. We can put a, a compass rose on there that shows you uh, the wind direction. So it's 11 knots there. Um, 27 left, 27 right. Uh, also, you have a direction bug. So there's my aircraft, and that's the direction that it's pointing in, which is due east. So we can put that on. Then there's range rings as well. Uh, there's vectors, which you don't see so much at the moment because we haven't got... Um, the simulator connected to it. This is all standalone at the moment. Then there's information about your airport, so weather, um, terrain, and there's VORs, NDVs, DMEs, miscellaneous, which is traffic and traffic labels. Okay, so there's n as I'm not connected to the simulator, okay, uh, you don't see any traffic, uh, obviously. So I'm not connected to the sim and I'm not connected to that sim, okay. So turn that off. Up on the right hand side here, you have these different tabs which gives you uh, more information. Uh, and we can close those as well just to clean it up if we want. So we've got information about Heathrow Airport. So the elevation, transition altitude, transition level is set by ATC. The wind at the moment is 120 at 11 knots. Yep. Yeah. Um, temperature is 8 degrees centigrade uh, one uh, dew point is one so no fog q and h and uh, flight conditions bmc uh, this is a uh, data about my flight from Heathrow to madrid if i was flying you'd be able to see what my active waypoint is and the distance to it and the time and the bearing so forth and so on and then uh, aircraft ambient so there's uh, information about the aircraft itself um gross weight fuel on board uh, my ground speed, which is zero knots, and the wind is eleven uh, is one one zero at eight knots. So you can see the direction that the wind is coming relative to your aircraft and your center of gravity. Uh, we also have auto zoom feature here, um, and I'll explain that as we create a flight plan. Okay, so that that is the first part of the just familiarization of EFB. So moving on, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a flight plan, but rather than do it from Heathrow, I'm going to change. So first of all, the first thing to do is come to airports up here and then just type in the IKO code. Okay, so I'm going to type in Cardiff, select, and immediately we've moved to Cardiff Airport here. Um, now, of course, because I'm not connected to the flight simulator, uh, there is no aircraft showing. Now, that's okay this is standalone it operates outside of x-plane so therefore i can create a flight plan from here uh, so we then come to the flight plan button here forget about procedures at the moment go to the flight plan button and what you see here is a, a representation of all the flights that is my last flight sorry the Heathrow to madrid that's the last one okay so let's clear that flight plan okay flight plan is cleared you see it's all it's all gone uh, <laughs> and we need to create a new flight plan so create flight plan and what happens you click on that button and this dialog box opens um, the reason why everything's clicking backwards and forwards is because normally I would run EFB on my large monitor and then move it over to the left here but uh, for filming purposes I'm doing everything on the left monitor and so dialog boxes are opening on the right and I'm having to drag them across it's not a problem okay so I uh, select an airport EGFF Cardiff yep select okay select a destination so uh, let's see we'll go to we'll go to uh, Innsbruck I think Lowy, Innsbruck, select. So there we go. Cardiff to Innsbruck. Now, uh, we have a, a couple of different ways of creating a route. Uh, so we can do route finder. And what that does, it brings up route finder over here. And it's already put in the uh, Cardiff to Innsbruck. So then we click on find route. And very quickly, Route Finder finds this route and uh, just quickly looking through it. Uh, yeah, this is the route that I recognize. So 
And what it doesn't do though is it doesn't put in the SID and it doesn't put in the star. Although you can do that with root finder. If you wish it to, you can add those two things and it will do so. Click OK. And now the root is in the bottom here. It's in the bottom part of routing. So we go to next. Uh, change our call sign from uh, Chanex to Speedbird. I uh, am in a 733. Weight category is medium. I'm not going to put anything about equipment because I'm flying a IFR and controllers should know that. So uh, it's saying a departure time of 8.43, which is exactly um, a bit late. So I can change that. So we'll put that to we'll put that to 10.43 just for the sake of it. Uh, I can en route ETE en route is um, what's about. It's actually about one and a half hours, but we'll put two hours in and then for fuel, I will make sure that I have something like three hours of fuel. Um, it's going to give me a cautious level remaining fuel at uh, one, and a, uh, one and a half tons. OK, so there we go. Next. Uh, now I get the opportunity to save this route. So I'll save it and I save it to my EFB folder. Now, you'll see something here that says exporters, and uh, this is where you would export your flight plan uh, into whatever simulator you have. Unfortunately, they have not figured a way out, figured a way of exporting into X-Plane as yet. So this is where things get a little bit complex for you, because that means what you have to do is you're going to have to copy your flight plan somewhere and then write it into, um, into X-Plane or copy it into notepad and save it as a, an FF, FMS plan and then you can call it up through the FMC of your aircraft. But anyway, click on finish and there's our flight plan and if we look over here, let me move that out of the way, you can see the flight plan has been drawn from Cardiff all the way to Innsbruck for us, okay, already done but obviously there is no uh, SID and there's no arrival so well, the flight plan saved. What we can do now is put in our departure and our arrival. So we come down here to where it says RSB and we click on departure under ETFF. This brings up this dialog box where it has all your procedures in. Okay, it's giving me runway one two. I didn't check the weather for Cardiff. I will do that shortly. Uh, but runway one two, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to have to be a Brecon one Bravo departure, I think. Let's have a look. No, we're not going to go to Brecon. We'll go to Alvin. So it's an Alvin one Bravo departure. Now the good thing about this, and let me try and pull everything over here, so we can see what's going on. Right. The good thing about this is if you're not sure of your departure. You can just click through until you find one that looks right. Well, that's Exmoor 1 Bravo. That goes down there. Brecon 1 Bravo goes up to Bravo. Well, that's not right. Alvin is our next waypoint. So there we are. The Alvin 1 Bravo departure off runway 12. So take off. We'll zoom right in now. Take off on a heading of 118. Turning left at uh, D11.8 onto a heading of um zero zero one and at uh, four thousand five hundred feet turn right onto a heading of zero five eight well alvin but you you don't need to do that unless you're flying it by hand then of course you would but yeah there we go there's your departure so set the flight plan and that has been moved into the flight plan now and uh, that's done now, of course, we want our arrival into Innsbruck. So we click on arrival down here and it shows us all our arrivals. Now, it's normally a runway 26 circle to land. So it'll be an RNAV approach. Um, so it's an RNAV and it's a Rittenberg 1 Bravo. OK. So let's have a look at this is a bit it's a bit longer to look at but here we are so let me set the flight plan okay that is done 
I believe. Yeah, let me move that out of the way because I can't see. So you come in, not Ritzenberg, it's Ratzenberg. So you come in over the top to Ratzenberg uh, to 13,000 feet, descending down here. Yeah. Circle to land and then come in. Oh no, here we go. Sorry. Down and then down this way and in. Yeah. If it's on zero 08, it's a, a little bit easier. Not easier, but slightly different. So let's have a look. So, um, procedures, uh, clear that, and then go to procedures for runway eight. So it's our nav approach to runway eight. This is uh, still Ratzenberg, set flight plan. And it's the same, comes in coming off Ratzenberg and then circle to land here onto runway 08. And then at the bottom here, you can see you coming in at uh, your final approach fix, approximately 15 DME, 8,300 feet, and you descend on the glide slope. Now, when you actually fly the plan, when you actually fly, then this is the really cool thing about this, is that uh, when you use your moving map feature, which is, uh, I forgot that, uh, I forgot, there we go, map, moving map feature. My aircraft's still showing at Heathrow, but when you use the moving map feature, you actually see your aircraft follow the flight plan. Okay, so it'll actually follow the flight plan all the way. And then when you get to your destination, over here at Innsbruck, whoops, Let's get over to Innsbruck. Innsbruck. There we go. When you get to Innsbruck here, and you finally you get to eight thousand three hundred feet, you'll see your aircraft descend on the glide slope. And if you're high, your aircraft will be above, and if you're low, it will be below. So not only will you be able to look out of your cockpit window and your instruments and everything, uh, you'll be able to actually follow down you have to come down on the glide slope to the runway and you'll see your aircraft down here representation of your aircraft absolutely brilliant now there are a there are a lot of features within this but you've seen the main ones i mean this is all you really need and i'm telling you now that once you use efb you will never go to any other um any other uh, flight simulator, uh, flight planning tool, believe me. I, I used this back in the days in FSX and P3D and it is simply the best, without any doubt whatsoever. So there you are. Don't forget you can get it for 30 days free. So there's a, a 30 day free trial is uh, unheard of in uh, the flight sim world. You get a free trial of, uh, of such uh, length. If you don't like it after 30 days, delete it end of story if you do like it then buy it and I highly recommend this I, and and as I say I used it years ago in FSX and it was equally as good then as it is now there's been some design changes in the interface uh, but not not huge design changes so for me I didn't need, I haven't looked at the manual it is very very intuitive and uh, I think you'll find that this is uh, the one and only flight planning tool that you'll ever need. It is absolutely superb. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. My name is Wycliffe Barrett. This is x -Plane Dedicated. We'll see you all soon. Take care now. Cheerio. So you've made it to the end of the video. I'm sorry it was so long. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you disliked. Don't forget, click on subscribe and hit the notification bell. And you'll be notified when videos of mine are uploaded to YouTube.